Uh, all right, so time is up. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Hejin Zhang from Seoul National University. And uh, so let me first introduce uh, the beginning of this program. So we, uh, from this year, we just started the academic networking between SNU and NUS uh, in Singapore about the joint lecture series on the material science and engineering. So I'm really happy and honored to start this series with Professor Jingsheng Chen in uh, NUS, uh, who you can see as the first speaker today. Uh, all right. So uh, I'd like to first announce that uh, this lecture will be recorded and the part of this uh, like the recording uh, can be uploaded to the YouTube channel of our of our department. So but uh, you don't have to worry about that uh, because the only the, the presentation slides and the camera of the speaker uh, may can be included. All right. So this lecture will be about 60 to 90 minutes long. And if you have any questions, you can type in the chat box or you can ask it directly after, uh, after the lecture. So, uh, and even though this uh, part of the lecture will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, I still encourage you to attend the lecture as much as possible. So you can communicate more directly with the speaker and also we can uh, promote uh, academic networking between our two departments. Uh, all right, so let me first uh, introduce our uh, first lecturer, Professor Jingsheng Chen. Uh, he is an associate professor in the Department of Material Science and Engineering at NUS. Okay. Uh, and he's studying uh, great research. He's doing lots of great research, including the magnetic materials and devices for spintronics, and also high and isotropic magnetic materials for hard disk drives and multiferroing materials and also emerging ferroelectric materials and devices. And recently he's got the prestigious award from IEEE Magnetic Society as a distinguished lecturer. So here is a short advertisement that actually Professor Jingsheng Chen is going to visit our campus about two weeks after. So he will, he will be physically here in Seoul. So I believe today's lecture will be a preview or some exercise like before his uh, the research talk from the distinguished lecturer. So uh, I hope everyone can, if you are interested in, you can join the lecture uh, in on August 18th, and then we can continue our discussion at that time. Okay, so today uh, will be a virtual lecture, as you can see here. So uh, now, Professor Jingsheng Chen, you can go ahead uh, if you are ready. OK. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank Professor Jiang to uh, arrange such fantastic you know, uh, issue between uh, 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 fantastic, OK, the co-lecture program between the two departments. I think it will benefit, OK, from all my departments, all your departments in the future. Okay, and today I would like to discuss the material design and the selection for ultra high density manual recording. You know, this lecture is specially designed for some uh, undergraduate, undergraduate students, senior undergraduate students, and uh, some maybe junior graduate students. So I would like to discuss how we can use the knowledge we have learned during the, you know, the four years or three years uh, university course and then, and to design and selection the super materials for use for meet the requirements of the ultra high density magnetic recording media. And finally, our design had been commercialized by the industries. So, you know, okay. okay, this kind of, okay, materials through, okay, this kind of material design and the selection, including the deposition technologies and uh, deposition process and material selection and uh, engineers. So before we, we, okay. 
Before we start this lecture, I would like to first give a brief introduction on the memory hierarchy in the current computer systems. And on the top, we note which is a CPU. CPU is a logic device. It's made of a CMOS, complementary, uh, complementary metal oxide transistors. So, you know, based on the current now Newman architecture between the logic device and uh, memory still communicate with each other. So in order to increase all the performance of these computers, definitely we need to build some memories very close to the CPU. So this we call the on-chip SRAM. This very fast, it's very close to the CPU, but the density is very low, you know. When we build the memory with the CPU, the cost is very high, definitely. And therefore, we have a separate static random access memory, we call the SRAM. This kind of SRAM is used for the CPU cache. We also call the L1 cache and L2, L3 cache, different levels. This kind of memories is also built with the CMOS transistors. Normally, six transistors is built to a, as a one recording bit. So therefore, the density is quite low. Here, we refer to the the foot, uh, the density we can uh, refer to the 140. Here, the feature size square, the smallest the feature size square, and uh, for static. Uh, Random access memories is quite fast, also fast, one nanosecond. Here on chip, that means close to the CPU is a three point three nanosecond. Below this one is a non wallet, it's still at the DRAM, is a volatile. This kind of DRAM is, a, you know, the density is high, it's around a six okay, feature size square, it's made of one transistor one capacitor for one recording bit. Now here, the speed become slow. It's smaller than 10, uh, it's become a 10 nanosecond compared to the SRAM is a one nanosecond. And uh, below this volatile memory, we have a non-volatile memory. Here, I think everybody know the laptop is using the, this kind of flash-based non-volatile memory. You know, this non-volatile memory is built with a one transistor, one bit. So therefore the density is high, but the speed, it becomes slower, slower, and around 0 0.1 to 10 millisecond. This is because we need to refresh. We need to refresh. Okay, we need, when the writing, we need to 10 million electrons to the gate. So therefore the speed becomes uh, slow. And also, Below this is the hard disk drive. The hard disk drive is a mechanical movement based. So therefore is a, the low, slowest is around one to 20 millisecond. So, but the density become much larger. Now is, I think it is a, a larger than the one tier base per square inch. In terms of the power consumption, we know the SRAM and the DRAM both are uh, transistor based. You know, this for the SRAM, you know, we consume one switch is consumed very small, it's only 0 0.5 femtojoule. But it will have a large standby power. That means if you didn't use this kind of memory, still you need to supply the power. Uh, supply the power. Well, for this kind of DRAMs, since we need to refresh the capacitance, the capacitor. So this refresh the capacitor normally is around a, a every a few every tens of hundreds microseconds. We need to refresh of these capacitors. So it also consume a lot of energies. Well, this one, this um, flash-based memory is uh, consume around a 10 femtojoule per bit, but the there's zero standby power. Therefore, currently for the 
portable electronics, right, normally use the flash memories. Well, the largest, for the hardest strap, they have large power consumptions. So people, based on this, okay, people are in the, in the large power consumption and the slow speed, based on this, people think, okay, hard disk drive will become sunset industries. But I say it's no. Why? Okay, here we show the comparison between the hard disk drive and the flash. Even though now the data I show here is quite uh, out of date, but the, the, you know, this trend is still valid. Uh, still valid. You know, nowadays we know, right? Even though all the portable electronics use the flash memories, it seems the flash memories is, also, is already everywhere. But you can recall how many data you can generate per day, right? We use our handphones to take a photo, to generate the videos, and, and then we may upload the photos and the videos to the social media. Maybe upload the different social medias, we call it duplicated the date, same data. So you can imagine how many data per person can generate per day. You know, where the data are stored? We know the data is stored in the cloud. Right, a cloud. Cloud also need to record. Uh, you also need to the server and into the memories to re, uh, to store the, this data. That memory is based on the hard disk drive because it's cheap. It a, has a very very high density. So you know, compare the previous uh, the, in the past ten years. Now the cloud become more and more compared to the Okay, in the past and the desktop. So therefore, still the hard drive have a very okay increase the demanding. So for increase the data storage, we cannot only rely on the increased number of the devices. We have to increase the, the error density. That means per device can store more data. In the magnetic recording media, we know the magnetization up and the magnetization down represent the zero and one to record the data. For one recording bit here, for example, the blue one and the red one re represent two recording bit, zero and one. So for one recording bit, which consists of our many our magnetically as to the greens for them. The SNR signal to not ratio is proportional to the number of greens per unit uh, per bits. So in that case, we know in order to read out the data, we have to maintain certain SNR ratio. When we increase the recording density, that means we need to reduce the recording bit. In order to maintain the certain SNR ratio, we have to reduce the grain size. That means we require the smaller grains. But with the further reduce the grain size, you know, the grains become similarly unstable. We know the magnet, magnet moment up and down. Okay, this also need to overcome the barrier. Okay, one one we need to switch the up and down. We need to overcome a barrier. We call it, this barrier is called a KUV. This energy barrier. We know that at the room temperature we have the thermal energy. This thermal energy can over can also overcome this energy barrier to make the magnetization become uh, from the up to down. So therefore you lose your data. This we call a thermal instability. In order to store the data for 10 years, this common requirements for the industry, we need to require this KUV divided by the KBT larger than 40. 
This we call the thermal stability factor. The KU here we use the magnetic and the entropy. V is a volume. Our each grains. It's not all the grains. It's each grains. So from here we can see when the grain size becomes smaller, that means the volume becomes smaller. So therefore the KUV becomes smaller. So the thermal stability factor becomes smaller. So therefore the thermal energy can enable the loss of the data. In order to increase the thermal stability factor, we need to increase the anisotropy constant for small grain size. So definitely this will cause some readability issues. We will not discuss this one. Definitely this one can be overcome by the, we call the heating assisting the magnetic recording. What is the right, uh, writing principle? You know, this is a writing height. During the writing, you know, the laser is on. So therefore we hit the magnetic materials, heat up to the high temperature. So the cohesivity will be smaller. So therefore we can, you can use the writing head to write in the date in these regions. And after writing and the laser already turn off. So therefore this recording media will cool down to restore this data at a high cohesivity, high anisotropy. So therefore, we can get, okay, the date more stable. That means it can stay for longer time. So this is a recording scheme. So for the high anisotropy materials, here is a table we list which have been discovered in the bulk materials or in the thin film materials. The currently, okay, common recording media used the cobalt alloy. You know, here we have already calculated the minimum grain size. Okay, we want to assume the second is a 10 nanometer. From this table, we can see the minimum grain set we can achieve it is a 1.4 nanometer in diameters. So this is a summary cobalt file alloy. Its magnetic crystal and entropy is a 20 times 10 to the power 7 ergot per centimeter cubic. Well, for this kind of alloy, which is a chemical unstable, we know this is a rare earth alloy. So it's not a practical for the real applications. And then we looking for another materials, which is the L10 phase and platinum, where the magnetic crystal entropy is a seven times the 10 to the power ergot per centimeter cubic. Now the green size, the lowest, the smallest green size allowed is a 2.6 nanometer in diameters. So what is the advantage? Okay, for this one, we know this uh, seven high anisotropy and the Q temperature is the modest. So therefore we can use a laser to hit the magnetic recording meter to record the data. And also these materials has a good corrosion resistivity. So therefore these requirements for the overcoat to protect the media, it becomes easier. You know, actually this kind of magnetic entropy is a referred to the magnetic crystal entropy. That means the magnetic entropy is related to the man, uh, related crystal structures. So here, the magnetic axis is along the 001 directions. So from here we can see, in order to maintain the magnetic axis along the 001 direction, we have to control the crystal structure, I mean crystal orientation. 
So before we discuss how to control the crystallographic graphic orientation, we give a brief introduction on the magnetic isotropy. You know, the, for the magnetic crystalline isotropy, this really depends on the crystal structures. For example, this element zero and platinum, which has a tetragonal structure, we heard we call the uh, face centered tetragonal structure FCT. That means the A axis, which is a three point a six nanometer, which is larger than the C axis, which is a three point seven one nanometers. So therefore, it will generate a uniaxial anisotropy along the zero to one direction, which this uniaxial anisotropy can be represented by, okay, this one. This is the energy, okay, energy, uh, anisotropy energy. This anisotropy constant, how they change with the directions. You know, for the another common materials, which is cobalt, which is the HCP phase, well, which also had the uniaxial anisotropy, which is aligned on the 002 directions. From here, we can see the K1 is around the only 4.1 times 10 to the power 6 ergot per centimeter cubic. You know, this anisotropy is one order of magnitude smaller than the L10 and platinum. Definitely, there are some. For cubic crystal structures, the anisotropy energy can be represented by this one. Here is a, the first order magnetic crystalline anisotropy constant. You know, for examples, the ions and the nickels, which has a cubic structure. There, there are three easy axes which align along the either is a one zero zero direction and uh, zero one zero direction and uh, zero zero one direction, three axes. Well, for the nickel, maybe it's around uh, the one one three one one directions. So this, uh, you know, this uh, idea case, the history loop for the, okay, a uh, hard materials. That means for them, for the L10 and planet materials. When we apply, when we apply a magnetic field along the zero zero one directions, so therefore this we show this kind of hisses loop, square hisses loop. When we apply the okay, we apply the magnetic field along the hard axis. It means along the one zero zero direction, or along the zero one zero direction. For any directions in the this, we will show this. Uh, straight line pass through the origin we call it as a hard axis loop you know here is a 2ku divided by m the cursivity this is a room zero temperature cursivity also called an anisotropy magnetic anisotropy field so this is an ideal case so in order to control the easy axis we need to control the crystal orientation. The control of the crystal orientation is achieved by the epitaxial growth. You know, for the epitaxial growth, here I will give a brief introduction on the epitaxy. Epitaxy refers to the type of crystal growth of materials deposition in which a new crystalline layers are formed with one or more defined orientation with respect to the crystalline seed layer or crystalline substrate. You know, for the epitaxel, there is a homo epitaxel. This kind of epitaxel is performed with only one materials. And that means the thin films and the substrate has a, it has same materials. Uh, if definitely people also have mentioned a special homo topo taxi, which is a process similar to the homo taxi, except the same film's growth is not limited to the two dimensional growth. Also, can be a three dimensional growth, for example, island growth. So, therefore, 
Okay, in common, we did not uh, distinguish these two attack groups, okay, significantly. So we only called homo attack groups, refer to the both two dimensional groups and the three dimensional groups. We did not distinguish that too much. You know, there's another one we call the hetero groups, which is a kind of epitaxy performed with the materials that are different from each other. That means in hetero groups, a thin films grow on a crude substrate and the films of different materials. In this case, we will introduce some lattice mismatch. This may be you are okay quite often okay heard about this uh, lattice mismatch. The definition of lattice mismatch is a uh, lattice constant of uh, films minus the lattice constant of the substrate divided by the lattice constant of the thin films. In order to maintain the epitaxial growth, we call it heteroepitaxial growth, the lattice mismatch should be smaller than 9%. But recently, still people have discovered what kind of a, we call a domain match appetite growth. In that case, okay, the, for one unit cell to one unit cell, lattice mismatch is larger than the 9%. But in that case, is a, that means the whole domain appetite growth refer to the, the thin film, for example, three unit cell, or four unit cell, for them, four unit cell corresponds to the three unit cell of the substrate. We call the domain appetite growth. Similarly, we have the heterotopotaxy. So this can be similar to the heteroapotaxy, except the same film growth is not limited to the two dimension growth. Actually, in this okay, lecture, we all refer to the three dimension growth. Normally, we refer to three dimension growth. We still call the heteros epitaxial growth. But we can refine the epitaxial growth to the green to green epitaxial growth. If we did not use a single crisp substrate, we use a multi, uh, multi crystalline under layers or seed layers. In that case, the one green epitaxial growth, the another green of the seed layers or under layers. In this case, we can only control, we can only control the texture. That means the plane parallel to the, uh, the substrate. We cannot control the directions in the lateral. So now we give more examples how to control the appetite growth. For example, we take the Cobalt as examples. You know, cobalt is commonly used in the many recording media for longitudinal media or perpendicular recording media. Cobalt has a HCP face. You know, this HCP face is an atoms arrangement like this. There are four cobalt atoms. There's another one on top of these three, you know, three atoms here, and another six atoms from the hexagonal, okay, arrangement. You know, in order to maintain, okay, the easy axis is uh, in the outer plane, right? We need to maintain the attack goals is a zero, zero, 002 texture. That means the easy axis is along the zero, zero, 002, right? So therefore, we need to find a substrate or under layer which has the HCP, has a, this kind of atom arrangement. If we want to control the okay, materials have the longitudinal, that means the easy axis is in the in-plane directions. This is the easy axis direction, right? We have to find out, for example, this one, one zero zero plane must lie down on the film plane. So therefore, this plane must be parallel to the same film plane. So we need to find a subtweet or under layer has this kind of atom arrangement. These are four atoms, right? With the A and C, these are lattice, const uh, lattice constants. C, lattice constant of A, you know. We know that for cobalt, the A equal to zero point, 
to five nanometers. And also, there are another possible, if you want to get a longitudinal media, that means you make the easy axis align in the film plane. You have to, this plane, right? Still, okay, if this plane parallel to the substrate, so therefore it easy axis still in the film plane. So in that case, you know, this become a square. Uh, it's not square, okay, it's almost square. Okay, now the A here, you can calculate it. A the square root of three, A. This is a still C. Also, center, there's a one atoms. There are four atoms, one. Uh, there are five atoms, one, two, three, four, and five. So therefore, you need to find the under layers has the five atoms can match these five atoms. Here, you need to find the under layers have a four atoms. Okay, match these four atoms. And also for this one, you need to find the under layers has a six atoms. Okay, a range like this one. So this one, how to find the under layers here? We take the and cubic structures. Example for the HCP under layer is easy, right? Because they have a same okay structures. For the S cubic structures, you know, for the face centered cubic, for example, we take the unequal example, which is a face centered cubic structures. For the one one plane, you we have a if we connect to the two unit cell, okay, we can find there is a six atoms, one one plane, right? Six atoms, a range like this one. The distance between two atoms, right, is equal to square root two, right? Divided by two, a here, you can calculate. Here, this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, diagonal, right? This diagonal, plain diagonal, is equal to the square two, a, right? Here is half of the uh, plain diagonal. Okay, so for the we so therefore we can get this hexagonal atom arrangement can be used as an underlayer to induce the perpendicular magnet entropy. That means the easy axis along the okay zero zero one direction or zero zero two directions. You know, for the chromium, chromium, chromium is a BCC structure, body centered cubic structure. So Okay, here is one atoms, one atoms, one atoms, right? Okay, if we connect the all the body centered atoms, you know, which had the five atoms, right? You know, these uh, five atoms, you can calculate the lattice constant for this, which is a 0 0.407 nanometer, right? Later we know, okay, we can use this to calculate the that is mismatch. You know, for the chromium 112, you know, this 112, you can draw it. It's like a, it's, it's like a, okay, uh, this shape. Okay, you know, the lattice constant can be calculated. Okay, which is in this one is uh, still equal to the 0 0.249. In this one is a shorter 0 0.204 nanometer. So, okay, based on this, therefore we can use the chromium 002 because here we know, right? There are five atoms. We can use it to induce the, okay, cobalt 110 plane parallel to the thin film plane. And we can use the chromium 112 plane, okay, to induce the cobalt 100 plane, okay? So, okay, now we further calculate. You know, this one we know is a 0 0.433 nanometer times 0 0.403 nanometers. Well, here is a, for this a chromium, okay, uh, 002 texture, right? Which has a 0 0.407 nanometer times 0 0.407 nanometer. So therefore you can see the lattice means match, right? This is much larger than this. So therefore, in order to 
induce, uh, reduce the lattice mismatch, we need to increase the lattice constant of the chromium. Later we'll discuss how to linearly, okay, to increase the lattice constant of one materials. You know, when we increase the, this one, because, for example, become 0 0.417, right? This, the lattice mismatch becomes smaller for this one. This one definitely is larger, but the, on average, it becomes smaller. So when we cobalt 100 on the chromium 112 textures, okay, now we know this one is 0 0.25 nanometers. This C is a 0 0.5. 403 nanometers. So therefore, when we calculate this one, you know, 0 0.25, right? Is almost the same with this one. Here is almost the same. So therefore, this is so very less, very small lattice mismatch. Very small lattice mismatch. That means the easy axis, okay, is well aligned along the 001 direction. And also there are less defects in the cobalt-based magnetic materials, magnetic films. So from here, we can say for the perpendicular one, we can use the, for example, the SCP structure to induce the cobalt alloy. For them, ruthenium to induce this one, right? It's also SCP, six atoms correspond to the six atoms. Titanium also SCP, six atoms correspond to the six atoms. Well, for the Cubic structure within the one one plane to induce the zero zero two plane text uh, zero zero two texture. Now when we okay when we refer to their let mismatch when we calculate this match we find out that ruthenium is zero point two seven nanometer, which is much larger than okay zero point two five. Okay here. This one titanium is a 0 0.295 is also much larger than the 0 0.25. So we need to how we reduce the lattice match. So we need to reduce the, the lattice constants of ruthenium, or we increase the cobalt alloy. Okay, okay, lattice constants. That means we doping some element into the cobalt to form a cobalt alloy to increase the lattice constants. So here, how we show how to adjust the lattice mismatch. Okay, this is an empirical method. There's no theory, but this only we can, but we can imagine based on the hard bomb model, okay, to explain why we can use doping some atoms into the films to form a line, okay, to increase the lattice constant or reduce the lattice constant. You know, this is based on the atom radius of the dopped element. If the dopped okay, element whose atomic radius is smaller than the host, then the lattice constant of the materials will be reduced. If the dopped atoms whose at atomic radius is larger than the host atoms. So therefore, in this case, the lattice constant will be increased. For example here, right? The MO, which is a lattice, okay, atomic radius is about uh, 1.39 Armstrong. So you can dump the MO into the chromium to in increase its lattice constant of the chromium. So therefore, to improve the texture of the cobalt. You know, here we know the chromium is 1.30, right? And while the ruthenium is 1.34 Armstrong. So therefore, you can doping the chromium into ruthenium to reduce the lattice constant of the ruthenium and the layer. So therefore, to improve the, uh, the, the lattice match and the improve the texture. And also, definitely, you can adjust the composition of magnetic layer to change the lattice constant, such as we know the platinum, which atomic radius is about 1.39 Armstrong. 
So therefore, you can dump platinum into cobalt to increase the cobalt or lot lattice constant. Here, okay, you can sh we we show that here, right? For the cobalt, we dump in the platinum. Here, the lattice count uh, the okay different angle here, and then shift to the low angle. Okay, shift with increase the PT, it shift to the low angle. This indicate the lattice constant has been reduced, has been reduced. Oh, sorry, has been increased. Okay, has been increased. So therefore, from here we can get okay cobalt. You know this still in plane, right? It's not LCP phase, but here with dumping this, we can get a very good okay problem isotropy. Definitely, this also dumping the platinum into this and also increase the spin of the carbon. This is due to magnetic reasons. It's not on uh, 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 also uh, some other reasons. For example, by increase the PT constant, the uh, PT contents, we can improve the spin of the coupling. Therefore, we increase the magnetic and the sort of bit. But uh, here, now we discuss the control the crystal orientation of the element zero and platinum. For this one, we say, okay, A, the light constant A is uh, about 0 0.3. A6. Well, we use a chromium. Chromium is a BCC structure. We know when we connect the, the four body centered atoms, right? Body centered atoms. It doesn't matter. We, we, we take the, okay, uh, the chromium 100, okay, as a, this one, this uh, 100 direction. We rotate. We rotate the arm platinum, okay, for 45 degrees. Okay, that means from here we can see this one. Okay, this is a in in the chromium. This is a plane diagonal, right? Plane diagonal. So we have a five atoms. Okay, match the five atoms of the Zero zero one planes. So in here, right, we know this uh, abtextual relationship is represented by the zero zero one plane corresponding to the chromium two zero zero. Okay, zero, you can see it, two zero zero plane. Okay, or zero zero two plane because this uh, two zero zero plane and the zero zero two plane are equivalent in the chromium because it's a cubic structure. So. When we write down here, this represents the one zero zero direction of the arm platinum, which corresponds to the one one zero direction. You know, this is a one zero zero direction of platinum. Right, well, you further this black spot, right? This is a one one zero direction. So this, uh, you know, are not define another direction. So now for this structure, one, once we define two directions, right? This, uh, okay, this crystal has been well defined. So therefore we using this abtesal relationship to define the, okay, abtesal growth. So now we can calculate the lattice mean match. You know, the here we know this, uh, Let's constant our films minus let's constant our substrate divided by let's constant our films. So therefore we can get a, we know that let's constant our films is 0 0.386 nanometer. Well, for the substrate, what substrate? Let's constant A. We know definitely it's not like this one, right? It should be, it's 110, okay, less this one. So we need to calculate the AS equal to square root two ACR. So therefore we can calculate is 0 0.407 nanometer. So therefore we can using this minus this one, we can get, oh, so there, sorry, there's a minus 5.4 uh, 5 
not only we call the minus represent the tensile stress, but uh, uh, if we did not define whether it's tensile stress or compressor stress, we just ignore the negative or positive. We just only, okay, using their absolute value amplitude to represent the lattice match. That means 5.4%. If we use a chromium to increase, uh, to induce uh, appetite growth is a uh, 5.4%. So now for the L10, I'm planting a lot. You know, this is a face diagram. You know, you know, here is a FCC alpha face, FCC face, or is FCC face. You know, we know in the L10 face, I'm planting. Let me 50 to 50 has the highest magnetic crystal isotropy. So it's around here. You know, in order to get this L10 phase amplitude, we need to hit this materials up to a one about 1,000 to 300, uh, 300 and then cool down to get this L10 phase. You know, definitely this phase diagram, phase diagram refers to the bulk materials in terms of thermal dynamic phase diagram. Well, in during the thin film deposition using the physical vapor deposition technology, you know, when the atom come to the substrate surface, it's not some equilibrium, okay, some equilibrium, okay, uh, situation. So, okay, dynamic will control the process. So therefore, therefore the phase transition temperature will be lowered down because when we deposit deposit the thin films, the surface diffusion become more important. Well, here is the bark diffusion is dominated in the bark materials. Surface diffusion is much higher than the bark diffusion. This is well known. So therefore, therefore the the phase transition temperature in the thin films should be lower than this one, but uh, still is larger than the 600 degrees C. You know, from here we can see, compare the FCC phase, the L10 phase, that means phase centered tetragonal phase. The difference is uh, here is uh, here the, the iron atoms, plantum atoms are randomly occupy the lattice position. But for the L10 phase, well, the so one atom layer and one atom layer PT alternatively stacking along the zero to one direction. So since, you know, the temperature, the order temperature is very high. Okay, we have come up with some method to reduce the order temperature. How to reduce? You know, when we know when a thin film deposit on a substrate, if okay, the lattice match exists some lattice mismatch. If the lattice match, okay, if the lattice constant of the substrate is larger than the thin films, we know there's a tensile strain, right? Tensile strain. We assume still one atoms. Okay, correspond to one atoms, which called a cubic to cubic appetite growth. You know, definitely the in plane lattice constant will be enlarged. And we assume the volume of the one unit cell still remain unchanged. So therefore, when this one, when the A lattice constant is enlarged, but the C lattice constant must be shrink. So well for the L10 phase the amplitude, you know, the is a lattice constant is smaller, it is large is larger than the C lattice constant. So therefore, this string can help, okay, to achieve this kind of crystal structures. So therefore, we call the string assistant, okay, 
appetite growth of the L1 zero phase. For the strain, right? How to increase the strain? So in the past, okay, in the previous slide we have calculated when we use the chromium as the under layers, which let it be match is a five point uh, five point four percent. So we can drop in some elements into these materials, into the chromium to increase the lattice constant. And then we can increase the lattice match. So therefore we can generate larger string. Okay, this string we will ex exert it on the L10 amplanet. So therefore we will lower down the order and temperature. So, and then, so therefore we demonstrate our ideas. We try to, we use a single crystal substrate to demonstrate our ideas. We use the MGU as a single crystal. And we deposit the different buff layers, PT, chromium. We dump in some MO, okay, different contents of MO, okay, into the chromium to adjust the lattice constants. So therefore we can find out, you know, for PT, this uh, lattice constant is close to the, is close uh, to the uh, L10 I'm planting. But the chromium right here is lattice constant uh, to uh, point AA, right? We know is the lattice match become this one. When we drop in some MO into the chromium, okay, if lattice constant is increased, you know, the lattice match is become larger. And this is further increased and this become larger. Okay, this one is the uh, largest. So, okay, this uh, measured through the theta to theta XRD. And we have this, okay, abtesal relationship. You, you will ask how we confirm this abtesal growth. We use the, okay, XRD of spectrum, of axis uh, uh, XRD scan. That means, what it means, okay, when we do the theta to theta scan, we can tilt Okay, we can tell that the sub uh, the substrate to a certain angle. You know, in this case, the omega and uh, this two theta are fixed, which depends on the plane you choose. For them here, we choose the one one plane. Okay, one one plane here, one one plane. So one one plane definitely you know the angle between the one 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 plane and the Zero zero one plane. So therefore, you can adjust this, okay, tilting to that angle, okay, to that angle, and then now this one, okay, this one, okay, is a previous parallel to the uh, X three. You know, so this X three C that to C that does not change. Fixed to the uh, fixed, which corresponding to the one 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 diffraction plane so therefore and then you rotate you rotate this one okay since this are uh, four fold symmetry you will observe four one 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 planes okay from them here you will observe four one 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 planes so and uh, when we do the one one planes orientation for the we can uh you know when we do the projection of one one plane with respect to the zero zero one plane we can get which is a one one zero right we you can do the okay so this is a, a one one plane the normal direction of the one plane you do the Okay, projection on the zero one plane, which is along these directions. This is a one 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 direction. So therefore, in that case, you have already defined. You can define the one 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 direction for them. But in this part, in this direction, okay, is a one one direction. Okay, you can. So you ask, okay, this zero angles is a relative angles. This is depend on. Okay, 
the beginning of the okay uh, the starting point of the phase scan okay so and then when we define this one okay we rotate the to to try to find the uh rotate to the common one zero one planes okay common one zero one planes and then you rotate so then you still can okay make the projection of the normal of the one zero one plane you will find each direction is along the one zero zero direction so therefore the common one zero zero direction corresponding to the plantain one one zero direction so therefore also the plantain and plantain one zero zero direction correspond to the common one one zero direction so therefore you can get this activity goes through this kind of xrd okay measurements and then okay now we do some detail analysis we find out okay you know really with the increase with the increase the lattice constant lattice constant you know the c over a ratio become smaller that means the a become larger the c become smaller right c over a become lowest at this range okay and also the magnetic and magnetic and the is the highest in this region so from here we have already demonstrated our ideas through the lattice stream we can control the okay magnetic isotropy then we can control the order okay and also can control the appetizer growth through the common and the layer we can control the appetizer growth through the lattice mismatch we control the and magnetic isotropy therefore we can control the okay order and temperature so another one okay when we use the chromium as the under layers okay later we use the chromium okay chromium as the under layer okay so we found out that their diffusion you know the diffusion depends on the different constant and the time definitely you know this uh this one okay this definitely the diffusion constant is related to the temperature right so therefore at the high temperature definitely will cause some diffusion uh into the arm plantain. in order in order to reduce the diffusion we have to find some low diffusion constant okay with arm plantain. so we choose a pt buffer layer to block the diffusion we only put a one or two nanometer or two uh, between the platinum and platinum and the chromium we can okay here so the four nanometer is enough can all block the diffusion okay of the chromium into the unplanted but uh, still okay the unplanted uh, let it consider if thinner we will follow the under layers so this we first one we use the platinum layer to block okay this one so now we transfer the whole process onto the substrate on the glass substrate it's not single crystal so we have demonstrated from here right in the even at a very low temperature we can get the very good zero zero one okay l10 l10 phase you know 300 degrees is, you know compared to the previous one, already we have reduced the more than two more than 300 de uh, 300 degrees is. the ordinary temperature have been reduced more than 300 degrees is. definitely if in order to get a higher and solid we need to 400 okay 400 degrees this uh, is a okay the melting point uh, okay up, uh, larger than the 400 okay the glass subject will be deformed it's not the practical okay for the uh industrial applications these are okay using this so another one we have already controlled the easy axis now we need to control the mac microstructure based on the calculation okay we know when we want to in 
achieve the 10 terabits square inch per square inch, we need uh, 10 grains. This um, the minimum re requirements at that time, okay, and only eight grains per bit. Uh, it show 11.8 dB. This can be detected by the electric signal, uh, electric uh, circuit. So it's uh, require uh, eight grains. For eight grains, so therefore we need uh, for 10 terabits, we need uh, the grain size. It should be at least should be 2.5 nanometer. Okay, the grain size should be 2.5 nanometer. So therefore, how to achieve this one? Okay, still have a good zero to one texture, maintain the easy axis along the zero to one direction, and the high magnetic entropy. Okay, this is magnetic requirements. This is we are to in order to maintain the high thermal stability, and definitely tight switching field distribution. That means uh, the different grains should have a same magnetic anisotropy, had the same zero to one directions. So in order to get this one, we need a smaller grain size, non-magnetic interaction among the grains, uniform grain distributions. The uniform grain distribution to tighten the switching field distribution. The non-magnetic interaction to reduce this, uh, reduce uh, you know, the noise, the DC noise, okay? And the small grain size, okay, that's an increase the SNR. So, so now we, okay, in order to achieve this one, we have to review our microstructure controls, the thin film deposition process. You know, during the thin film deposition process, we have in, uh, interior surface diffusion, nucleation, and then growth. In order to re reduce the grain size, we have to increase the nucleation size that means more nuclear size okay we know the nuclear size is refers to defects okay on the substrate or some or some okay okay different reaction energies so therefore people using this control this one to introduce by etching by some oxygen plasmas to introduce some different okay to increase the nuclear size, this one. The other one is uh, we need to limit the surface diffusion to reduce the green growth, right? So limit the growth and decrease the diffusion time. So therefore you can increase the sputter rate. So that means at a sh okay, short time, more atoms will arrive on the Substrate, you know, the atoms don't have time to diffuse to growth. Another one is a decrease the temperature, right? Decrease the temperature, that means reduce the, you know, the energy, okay, diffusion. Okay. And also, we can add more elements to block the L10 and plantain atoms. Sorry, to re uh, block the iron iron and the platinum atoms for from diffusion so and also for the non-magnetic okay interaction so okay we need to isolate magnetic grains by non-magnetic materials so we need to non-magnetic material to separate okay the magnetic grains so decouple the interaction among the grains so therefore we need to dock in some non-magnetic materials which should stay at the green boundary, cannot form the law with the L10, with the iron plantain okay, materials. So therefore, you know, it's good. We know the oxide materials and the nitride materials is good because it's a ceramic, is a higher has a very low diffusion rate. So it can be used as a materials to block. The diffusion at the same time to separate magnetic separate the magnetic grains. So at the beginning, at the first we, we 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 okay try the silicon oxide is very common, right? Silicon you can effectively block the diffusion arm and the plantain atoms. But we find when we dump in some 
okay, sitting outside the materials, right? Sitting outside materials. The magnetic properties immediately degraded when we use the chromium ruthenium and the PT buffer layers. Even though they form some greens, some column greens, you know, this definitely is not a favor. So, okay, so we analyze this may be, you know, they cannot form the L1 zero, that means the, the, they block the uh, iron and planet atoms diffusion too much. So therefore we choose the, okay, a carbon. Carbon atom is small size, it's easy to diffusion, but uh, also does not form a lot with the iron plantum. But if you dump some metal, metallic material, definitely easy to form a lot with the iron plantum. Okay, so you cannot uh, separate, okay, the iron plantum grains. So when we dump the carbon atoms, we find out, oh, immediately find out, oh my God, we can get a, uh, five nanometer grains well separated and at the same time we can still get a very good zero zero one texture that means the easy exits should be along the zero zero one direction in the film norm in the film normal so okay it's, it's so simple just so we just started the project okay one or two years so simple with solve the industrial problems. And then, but when we do the magnetic analysis, we find out, okay, with the increase the carbon doping, we find out the histoscope is still very square. It's very square. It's very stable. This is, it's not like, a, okay, the a sum of grains with the, with, without interaction. This, okay, steep slope is due to the green to green interaction. You know, but uh, from the microstructure, it seems the greens are well isolated. You know, what the reason cause this one? You know, first of why this steep slope, okay, has some contradictory conclusion with the macrostructures. Because for assembly our grains with the well aligned okay is uh is axis okay along all along one directions is hasteless loop it should be like this you know you know why it's like this one because you know, this is a magnetic field filled by the magnetic greens, which equal to the external magnetic field plus the internal magnetic field, D magnetic field. So therefore, well, all the hisses loop here refers to a platter field, right? So this one should be H a platter field equal to the H intrinsic minus this one. You know. The square loop is intrinsic loop without consider the this one. So after you consider this one, you know, this become a they, they should have a slope. The slope equal to one actually, equal to one for the fully okay thin films, a fully isolated grains thin thin films. So what happened? So we have a do the Cross section TM. But we found out that yes, it's still well isolated green for the unplanned carbon. But we found out this platinum intermediate layer is simply become thicker. It's become thicker. So we need to find out what this, what the thicker one. Okay, so we think that this, uh, we do a, a thickness dependence. So if uh, we do a four nanometer 
on platinum carbon on the films they become continuous so therefore this is thicker one actually is a continuous platinum plus the continuous on platinum plus the platinum on the layer uh, intermediate layers so therefore where's the carbon the carbon is diffused to the surface so with increase you know increase the thickness the carbon still form the composite with the arm plantum. With further increase, they form good, you know, column structures, island column structures. You know, the square loop of the arm plant films is due to the coupling, you know. This is continuous, definitely the squared. Continuous film, right, is squared loop. And this magnetic films is coupled uh, to this magnetic grains. So therefore, when this switch, this also switch, so therefore they become a square screw. Okay, when we deposit these films on the glass, we did not find out these continuous films. This indicates the interface play measures to form these uh, continuous films. The interface plays some roles to force the common to diffuse out of the films. So, okay, we propose a modeling. Okay, at the beginning, you know, this plantain, okay, the, the carbon will diffuse out to the surface. With the increase of thickness, right? More carbon on the surface. So therefore, they start to form the unplanted carbon composite with the continuous films. But this kind of structure is not all desired structure, microstructures. This one is all desired. How can we achieve this one? So now we refer to the thin films growth mode. You know, the thin films growth mode, there are three, three kinds of thin film growth, island growth, layer by layer growth, and uh, layer by layer plus island growth. This depends on the interfacial energy between the films and substrate, and the surface energy and of the substrate. You know, when the, okay, when the surface energy between the subject and the films is uh, equivalent, they prefer the step-by-step -step growth. When the surface energy becomes smaller, they prefer the island growth. So therefore, we say, oh, this is due to the PT reason, cause the continuous fears. So therefore, we search a lot of materials, and definitely we not only consider the not only consider the uh, the lattice constant, also but also consider the surface energy. We find out that MU has a smaller surface energy, one point one joule per meter square. Well, the lattice lattice okay is also FCC structures, FCC structures, and. Uh, can cause the uh, can induce the zero zero one okay uh, preferred uh zero zero one okay zero zero one texture growth so and then we immediately compare okay this one we find out with the two nanometer mgu here immediately become green uh isolated uh, green structures and also the histolo become it's not square, right? It's some slopes. But this one is a continuous. So now we find, okay, through the analysis and the material selection, and, now, and then we choose the MGO as the intermediate layer. So with these structures, we can get a very good, okay, with the MGO two nanometer intermediate layers, we can get a very good zero zero one texture you know very good and uh, well controlled okay macro structures you know this is arm planet carbon and with the m on the mgo definitely you need to automate automatization this deposition process for them but deposition rate effect temperature some okay uh the gas pressure effect after optimization 
you can get a very good okay microstructures. And with this media structure, CG has demonstrated 1.4 ter terabits per square inch in the hammer hitting a seed magnet recording drill. You know, here the diameter, right? The, the, this uh, green side diameter refers to the center to center, from one green center to another green center. So therefore, this include already includes the green boundaries. It's not only the green size, include the green boundaries. <laughs> okay, so now we find still we find out some problems. Even though if you show very good the zero one texture, right? It means since very good the easy axis, okay, uh, along the auto plane. So ideal case, a measure ideal case, if all the greens is easy axis along the auto plane, then here this in plane should be a straight lines. But here there's some open up. This open up will cause the noise, DC noise. Okay, during the reading out. This is not a favor. And also another issues we have mentioned, right? When we dump some oxide and nitride materials, okay, immediately its magnetic properties will immediately will be deteriorated. When we use an MGU as a okay buffer layer. So now my target. It's my objective is to reduce okay this open up let me make sure this become a straight lines that means all the greens along the okay all the greens has a zero zero one texture well align the zero one texture in the film normal so we analyze that this why we have this one you know when the greens grow on this MGU intermediate layers, we find out that there's a containing angle is less than 90 degree. And that means the low wettability of the amplantum on the MGU. So when the green cells become smaller and smaller, the contact regions, you know, these greens contact with the under layers become small and small, right? So we know how we control the appetite growth. We through the these contact regions to control the 001 orientation. 001 orientation. So when the this, this region becomes smaller, right? Any roughness, okay, deviation will cause the appetite growth along David from the perfect the zero zero one direction, maybe along this direction, right? Even maybe in the implant directions. You know, this is due to the this one reason. And also the oxide is easy to react with the MGO, right? So therefore the oxide will okay. A senior of this amphitheater will sweating on the MGO layers. So, therefore, this amplant will lose the contact regions. You know, without a strain, the materials at that low time, at that temperature, right, it's not a okay, good L10 phase. So, therefore, the magnetic property will become okay, the coercivity becomes small. These are reasons, okay? So, okay, when we realize, okay, we do analysis, we find these problems, we try to solve it. We try to go, um, we also, we try to search some other materials, okay? Now, another materials, titanium nitride, immediately come to my, okay, okay, uh, my, okay, uh, we choose a, a titanium intermediate layers. Why? Because the lattice constant is quite similar to the MGU. MGU is a 4.21, I'm strong here. That nitride is a 4.24. You know, the resistivity is a 20 micro ohm meter. It's a, this is, okay, this is pattern. You know, industry, 
they prefer the DC pattern. It's not, they don't, okay, want to use the RF pattern. There are two reasons. RF pattern, RF pattern, the pattern yield is low because pattern rate is low. In the hard disk okay, companies, right? Okay, the production yield should be not, uh, in, uh, uh, should be now is already two to three seconds per disk. And not four to six, now already become three seconds per disk. We need a very high sputtering rate. And uh, the vitability on platinum, you know, from here, favor the aptitude growth because uh, the surface energy is slightly larger than this. It's larger than this. Definitely, if less nitrogen, if the nitrogen deficient the titanium nitride, the surface energy is more larger because the nitrogen. Titanium bond consists of the okay, covalent bond, metallic bond, and uh, ionic bond. But this one, only the ionic bond. And why we choose the, okay, another good okay, advantage to use DC is a uh, DC pattern is DC pattern generated less particles on the sample surface. RF pattern will generate more particles on the sample surface. So, okay, so we, I must do the immediate demonstration idea. When we just choose the, you know, the two nanometer, three nanometer, okay, until seven nanometer MG, uh, nitride, you can see at the four nanometers, at the five nanometers already very good, you know, good, uh, Texture, you know, very good texture. You know, this implant become straight lines. You know, the titanium nitride, one function, now three functions, right? Blocking the diffusion of the chromium into the implantum. Okay, control the surface energy and control the, okay, the string and the zero zero one texture. Okay, when we dump through this one, we immediately doping some nitride. You know, when we doping nitride, now still can get large. Okay, still very large. Okay, permanent and sorted. But the one that I'm due, right, become deteriorous. This in the case, okay, titanium is much better. And also, titanium. Nitride can allow to doping some oxide and carbon all together. You know, can see this one, right? Very good. Permanent anisotropy and linear implant anisotropy, linear okay, implant crystal loops. Oh, but uh, when we further do the analysis of the structure, we find out, okay, indeed, you know, the contained angle is uh, smaller than the 90 degrees. At the beginning, it's larger than the 90 degrees, right? So, and the also grains are not well isolated. So this is a dilemma, okay, the dilemma. So we therefore we have to further reduce the surface energy. How to reduce? You know, we know when we're dumping some, okay, titanium, titanium oxide nitride, you know, it's a lot, it's a, okay. So when we dump some oxygen, we increase the iron bonding, increase the iron bonding, reduce the, Metallic bonding. For example, this uh, one materials, okay, we're doping, we co spartan titanium nitride and titanium oxide, titanium oxide. Okay, we can find, okay, there are 60% is the titanium oxide nitride. Okay. So, okay, immediately we observe this one, you know, the microstructure become better, much better, right? Much better. You know, this become uh, okay ninety degrees. This uh, smaller than ninety degrees. This uh, you know, this uh, become rectangular shapes, rectangular shapes. So definitely we need to further okay. After we using this one, we still can get uh, okay good implant and sorted implant hisses loops. So and then we can further tune tune these microstructures. You can we can drop in more elements. Okay. More sitting the outside, we can get very good, okay, well isolated grains and the structures. Definitely for our optimization, okay, the industry can do better 
optimization. You by using our ideas because you you know how they do the optimization. They think they use a uh, uh, you know every day they actually they can produce one thousand disk. One thousand can change one thousand okay parameters to optimize the the conditions. So still, however, very good. So another one, you know, we know the KU way, right? When we further reduce the grain size, okay, we need to increase the volume, increase the thickness. But for this method, the one that increase the thickness, okay, still more carbon or okay, we will diffuse out. So they will, gen, uh, will cause the second nucleation on top of this one. The second nucleation is the FCC phase implantable. It's not good. Okay. It's not good for the perpendicular uh, medias. So, therefore, we come up with some other ideas. Okay. That means at the beginning, we, are, we use the armor first stopping. Armor first, okay, material, sitting dioxide armor first. It's easy to diffuse or diffuse out. You know, if we grow some crystal outside. You know, the crystal outside, the diffusion, right? In the crystal, the diffusion is still the atom exchange, right? Atoms exchange. So the diffusion rate is very low. So that this means it's difficult to diffuse to the surface. So therefore, we choose uh, okay, the corner uh, oxide. And the decom oxide can also can attack goes on the titanium oxide nitride. So okay, we dump our ideas so here. You can see now by using this crystal material to separate to separate the to separate the grains. You know we can get the aspiration. It's a you know the column growth is a fourteen point nine nanometers with the diameter is a five point six nanometer. Well, in the previous one, the green, the green size can be still 5.6 can be achieved, but the thickness must be smaller than the six nanometers. But here you can see we can get a very high aspect ratio. Okay, we will not discuss details. Okay, the microstructure analysis. Oh, but then we found some, okay, you know, the after uh, still some diffuse, you know, the unplanted atom diffuse to form such kind of shapes. This will shape will cause some, you know, the interaction is not well isolated. So, and then, so therefore, we're dumping a certain amount of our carbon because the carbon is easy diffuse. Okay, easy diffuse. So, still, we can get a very good, okay, column growth by dumping the, okay, uh, crystalline, by crystalline materials dumping. And this is a summary, okay. In 002, we invented okay carbon assembly and PT buff layers. Okay. And uh, 206, we invented MGO intermediate layer and uh, unplanned carbon composite medias. Okay. And uh, in 2010 and uh, 2014, okay, we invented titanium nitride and titanium oxide. Okay. And uh, intermediate layers, we demonstrated get worse small grains. And now, in since 2014, Sege has used this kind of okay in the production lines. And for this, Sege and the West did working on the starting working on this one, titanium oxide nitride layers in since 2017. But now they have already, based on my ideas, they have already modified okay the intermediate layers. Okay, they have demonstrated the 2.6 terabits per three inch hyper medias. And they're already shifted to some very, uh, Facebook and uh, and uh, some larger cloud companies, uh, uh, social media companies, uh, okay, to test that there are some uh, hyper medias. Okay, thanks for your attention. Uh, thanks, Jingsheng, for the great lecture. I think it's really great that you cover really the fundamentals of crystallography and growth technique. And then you finally show how you use your knowledge to solve this engineering problem, right? It seems you really, you have come with 
the development of this this iron platinum the hammer technology okay. that's really great uh, all right so uh so students is this time for the q a so if you have any questions then you can speak up or you can type in the chat box and i also have a few questions so uh i have one uh maybe some fundamental question that you are using the iron platinum so i'm curious what is so special about iron platinum that you can make it really small, but you can still have it still shows the moderate the anisotropy constant, right? Yeah. Compared to other magnetic materials. So what is so special about that material? Yeah, because it's uh, you know the actually we didn't have a choice, you know, in industry, right? Have to find some high anisotropy materials. Mm -hmm. When we uh take a look at all the bulk uh, the, the magnetic property, the all the Discovered the bulk materials, and we found out that this L10 amplitude is uh, has the highest, uh, uh, just uh, definitely the second highest magnetosotropy, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, this good this material is very special. In the amplitude is very chemical uh, stable. Okay, it chemical resist uh, can against any corrosion, the chemical reaction is very, very, very stable. I see. You know. Uh, I don't know uh, how to answer your question because this, okay, really when we do very small, even do a three nanometers, okay, has maintained very good magnetic anisotropy. Mm -hmm. Because as long as this may be the magnetic crystalline anisotropy play many roles than other materials. Because when the brain cells become smaller and smaller, okay, if as long as it has a very good L10 phase, you know, the surface anisotropy, some other shape anisotropy still compared to this very big magnetic crystal and sort of is still very small so mm -hmm. the magnetic crystal and sort of is still playing dominated roles mm -hmm. so, so do you think there's no other alternative material that can replace iron platinum it's really the best material yes this cannot yeah all the best. yeah 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 i see uh great Uh, right, I can see a question in the chat box. Can you answer that question? Uh, uh this okay, uh, two questions. Which one? Oh, you can uh, answer the first one. one. Yeah. Okay, the first question is uh, okay, uh, wettability on an assortable of greens. It means low wettability. Between arm plant and arm dew reducing low growth rate on the parallel direction and the high spec ratio of arm plant grains. Mm, this is good question. Uh, yes, yes, uh, this, okay. Uh, you know, this uh, can, okay, we could go back to our. Uh, the thin films goes modeling. I think maybe your department also discussed some. I checked your, your your syllabus. You have already, you know, the module. You have still have a physical vapor deposition module, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think this uh, based on the thin film deposition, there are okay three models. This okay. Definitely, there are some researchers have a uh, spent a lot of time. Okay, efforts to okay to develop this kind of three modules. You know this. Uh, uh, we prefer the island growth. That island growth that means is yes, because this this refer to the you know the atoms okay from an island is easier or the atoms to interact with the substrate is easier or not. Which one is easier? For in this case means the atoms from an island is much more is much easier than the atom to attach to the substrate. So therefore we see. This, uh, you know, the island growth is much easier uh, compared to the lateral growth. I do I cannot see the growth rate. Yes, you know, uh, uh, maybe it's a growth rate. Yeah. Uh, along that, we call, normally we call it a three dimension growth. Uh, yeah. I don't know whether I answer your questions. Yeah. Uh, For the epic goals, I understand the dropping some M into the just let us so that we can avoid the defects. Such okay. Yeah, this one. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, the doping, yes, the doping is a defect. Okay, in the under layer, but uh, it's not defect in the in your materials. Um, normally, we choose a substrate, right? We doping some elements to adjust the under layers, but uh, this cannot be a, a defect in your films, right? Okay, this cannot okay cannot be defects. Okay, so the uh, the negative effect. Okay, if you refer to the, for example, arm plantum, if you want to reduce the lattice concentration arm plantum, you need you can dump some copper, right? But definitely copper and doping copper definitely will reduce the magnetic entropy. Mm -hmm. For the cobalt, doping platinum is good because the platinum doping in the cobalt will increase the magnetic entropy because the PT has a larger spin of the coupling. This, uh, this material specified, okay, depending on the materials, which materials, some materials may be good for doping, some materials is bad for doping, right? Is there an effect is negligible compared to that? Uh, this engineering, this totally no uh, some okay is that you know a lot of factors uh, okay compete with each others. You know this, why we call it engineer because now we only concern about the final results for the okay detailed okay okay uh, theoretical analysis. That's uh, we did not pay too much more details. Okay, therefore, this is only for the engineering, mm -hmm. uh, for the industrial applications, not for the fundamental research. Yeah, and, and you proved they all work uh, great, right? Yeah, this is uh, material, material science and engineering. This part is more on um, materials engineering. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, thank you. I hope that, I think the answer is all the questions, are there any other questions? I think uh, for your IEEE, the distinguished lecture, you have a different topic, right? Yeah, yeah, that's been challenging. That's, that's too fundamental. <laughs> I see, okay. Yeah. So I hope we can continue our discussion after two weeks in person okay. at the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, looking great. forward to meeting 